the bell ringer real quick. Alright, so in Kansas, remember. I used to bathroom there and then not long press it. Go, give me just a minute and why are you slide? Alright, so we'll close up all these weeks and we're on week five. The way I numbered them. Alright. Alright, bell ringer, two dash two because it is February second. February second. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, that fell back there. What was that? Uh, my uh, blue sticks fell. Uh, blue brick bills that I have been done. Uh -huh. All right, we'll go into student view here. Remember, we're going to do this together. You would click submit assignment. I did it with another class, so it's going to be. All right, so a liquid changing state into a solid is called what? Can you go from liquid to solid? Go um, from the end. Freezing. Very good. So number one is freezing. Oh, this is a little tight and freezing down here. Number two, a gas changed into a liquid. Gas I mean, no. That's what gets on your cold condensation. Condensation. It's on your cold glass. Mm. All right, this is one we're not as familiar with. The gas can go directly to a solid. Oh. Um. And if you were What's here. The Deposition. 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 All right. All right. And then four is a solid going into a gas, straight to a gas. What's it start with? S. Solidification. Very close. Sub Sublimation. Sublimation. And then where can you find plasma? Not blood plasma. Uh, uh, plasma as in charged particles. Space. All right, stars. Number five. That, that's it. Stars, neon lights, auroras. All right. I think I'm going to do it this way. All right, what I want you to do, Cameron, are you going to take a long time in the bathroom or are you going to be quick? No, I'm going to be quick. All right, well, I'm going to have this on the if you'll grab it on the All right. way back. All right. All right, you'll submit this, and you can click next um, here, and it takes you to the notes. So I'm going to let it in. Oh, um, you can just put stars. You don't have to have all three. Sit right here. Oh, okay. So, oh, you might not even want that All right, so we're going to talk about solutions. This is finishing up our unit on matter. So tomorrow we've got a review, and Thursday you're going to take a test um, on matter. And we're moving right along. So Thursday there'll be some time in class after the test that you can make up work, because I'm not going to plan to start anything new Thursday. So. Um, you can use that time to make up work um, after the test. So solutions is what we're going to talk about today. 
So we did mention earlier in this unit that um, homogeneous mixtures are considered a solution. That's because they're the same throughout. They have the same composition. What do we write right here? So um, you know, it's the words in black. Um, a solution has two parts. There's a solid, which we generally think of as a solid, like a powder, a lemon powder, lemonade powder. Um, and a solvent, which is a liquid, which is water usually. And so the water, the solvent, is going to dissolve the powder, and then it's going to look the same throughout. It would have the same density, and it would taste the same throughout. So that is a solution. Well, what you need to know, and in the blank, you're writing what's in black and underlined. I think there's several blanks there, is it doesn't have to be what we think. It doesn't have to always be a solid and a liquid. Um, you can have an, um, a solution of gas and gas, which is air, like oxygen and nitrogen. You can have a gas and a liquid. That's your soda. Uh, what's causing the bubbles is carbon dioxide, if you didn't know. So that's a gas that's been mixed into the soda mixture, it causes the bubbles. Um, you've got liquid and liquid. You're rubbing alcohol. Do you want a copy or are you going to it? Okay. Um, so like the rubbing alcohol here, um, this is, uh, it says 91% isopropyl alcohol. So that means it has, um, it's a solution of water so 91% of it, though, is the rubbing alcohol and the other, or the isopropyl alcohol, and the rest of it is that percentage of water. Uh, no, this is um, like the second slide. Solution notes. Yeah. Um, so on here, we've gotten down to here. So in those blanks here are the underlying in black. Okay. So you may have to start here and then come back at the end and grab the first two oh, or the first part. Or to start with the next part since I'm ready to move on and yeah, then we'll get the first two slides in a minute. All right, solutions also can be solids mixed in solids. And typically this is with metals and we have a special name, alloy, which is a solution of metals dissolved in other metals. Um, you melt each metal and then you mix it and allow it to solidify. And examples are bronze. Bronze is copper and zinc. Uh, brass, which is like this instrument here, is copper and tin. And then you have sterling silver, which is copper and silver. Notice all three have copper. But it's mixed with something another different metal to get the different types there. Solubility is one of the physical properties of um, solutions or substances, and this is the maximum amount of a solute that can dissolve in a certain amount of solvent at a given temperature. So an easier way is just the substance ability to dissolve something. You're always going to have a set amount of solvent at a specific temperature, and there's going to be a given amount a solute that can be dissolved in that. Um, it's also going to depend on the nature of the solute. Is it is the solute a pol polar molecule? Um, is it nonpolar? Is it ionic compound? Um, so, that, uh, uh, so uh, and the temperature. So all of these oh, have to. I see it. You got it. Um, so temperature, and we're going to see this in a graph format, grams of solute and amount of water 
are the three things that we're going to be looking at. So we have three possible um, solutions. You can have unsaturated. Notice there's room to hold more. Saturated is holding the amount it can hold. And super saturated, it has too much because you have some at the bottom. So we're going to look at each one of these. Um, able to dissolve more solute at a given temperature. Um, this is unsaturated. So at that temperature, it is not holding its maximum capacity. It can hold more. It can dissolve more at that specific temperature. Um, if it started out saturated, if you heated that saturated solution, it would then hold more solute. saturated solution has all that it can hold at that temperature. It cannot dissolve anymore. It is at capacity, maximum capacity, and only if the temperature is raised would it be able to dissolve more. So the only way a saturated solution can dissolve more is if the temperature has been increased. Supersaturated. Um, Supersaturated solution has more solute than it can hold at a given temperature. And if you want it to dissolve that, you would raise the temperature and it would be able to dissolve it. But as soon as that temperature started to lower again, you would have particles collect at the bottom. So it's holding above the maximum capacity and typically you would see the left, the rest here. So when you want really, really sweet coffee and you keep putting sugar in it, and then when you're finished with the coffee, you still have sugar in the bottom of your cup, that means you had super saturated because it couldn't dissolve all of the sugar. And these are unstable, especially if you raise the temperature to make it, hold it, then when you lower the temperature again, it will not. You've got to be able to read this um, solubility curve here. So let's, we'll see if there's anything on here. Okay. So basically, this is showing grams here of solute. And this is showing the temperature. If it falls on the line, it's, sat it's saturated. If it is above whatever line you're looking at, it is super saturated. If it is below whichever line you're looking at, it is um, unsaturated. And we're going to, that's what our practice is, is dealing with the solubility curve today. So dissolving, how dissolving works. Water is our main solvent, it's the universal solvent. And why it's that is because it's a polar molecule. If you notice, um, this is a diagram of a water molecule, look how large oxygen is. Oxygen is a really large molecule. It is um, sharing, hydrogen and, and oxygen here are sharing electrons. Because oxygen is so large, those electrons spend more time with oxygen. So that makes oxygen have a negative charge and the hydrogens to have a positive charge. And because of this, they, it is able to dissolve um, other substances, um, if, it, if other polar substances, because they'll also have positive and negative ends. Um, ionic compounds, which are made up of um, ions that have positive and negative charges, and we'll get to that when we get into our reactions unit. Um, so water is able to do something called uh, disassociation. One of those solutes. Huh? Let me skip some. Right there, yeah. All right, you go, you go Okay. Now, disassociation is what's going on when water is dissolving. So, what happens, especially like in with salt and water, is that the positive ends of water is going to attract to the negative ends of salt, which is chlorine, and it's going to surround that chlorine um, ion. The negative ends of water, which is your oxygen, is going to attract to the positive ions of salt, which is the sodium, 
and water molecules are going to surround that sodium and it's going to keep um, those ions from attracting to each other and staying together as NaCl. And so this is um, how it is, these ions are separated and the dissolving process works. <clears throat> so it's, that's a blank, too many blanks. All right, there's one I think that says positive ends. No, I, negative ends of water. Uh, positive. Let me see here. So, got separate into ions. I got positive that. ends of water attract to negative ions. And this should have had a mark here, and for some reason it's not. You know, or maybe it does, it's not supposed to. Okay, negative ends of water attract to positive. So positive, negative, negative, positive, then attractive. So positive, negative. <clears throat> negative, positive. Ions of salt. Positive, negative, negative, and positive. Positive, yes. And then attractive, and then surround. So positive is more attractive. Yeah, then attractive in front of force. All right. And then surround in the last blank there. Got All right. it? Yeah. All right. So there are three ways um, you can affect dissolving. Uh, you definitely want to write what is in color. So smaller solid size. Uh, this increases surface area. So that means more of the solute can get around the solute and it will allow the dissolving to occur faster. Heating the solvent, so increasing the temperature causes the particles to have more energy and they collide more, allowing the dissolving to happen quickly. So think about if you go to a restaurant and you order unsweetened tea, it already has ice in it, it's cold, you go to add the sugar, and the sugar just does not want to dissolve. As much as you stir it, it just never gets as sweet as it would be when you add the sugar when the tea is hot. Um, so that is this, and then the stirring is helps the undissolved solid come in contact with the solvent. It will speed up dissolving, but it's not quite as good as heating or the smaller size. I need a question two months. Um, so what we're going to do um, today is we're going to then practice with, oops, practice with this um, solubility curve reading. That should be it. <clears throat> All right, now you need the next one? No. You good? All right, no. so if you have your notes, you can leave them to the side and I will check you out for that. And I'm going to give you the next thing we're going to do. Only the last page of what I'm giving you is There's graded. Um. Um, the, first two, the first page has some information we're going to talk about. The second page is just um, me talking through how to do some of these. And the third page is what you're going to do on your own. So give everybody yeah, a minute to finish it. up. Same. I'm going to next all right, I'm going to move over to my Jamboard in just a minute. And we're going to talk about what's on this front page. 
I'm going to go through some practice problems on the second page. The third page is your graded assignment. For those that did it on paper, if you want to submit a blank copy on um, in Canvas, that way it doesn't show up missing, um, we'll probably be good. All right, so you're all here. You're just going to click next. Well, I'm not going to look. Um, we do have a video. There's like two videos that you're going to watch. Um, but we're going to talk about this first. I just want to talk you through how to read um, graphs like this. So if you look at the first page, which isn't up here, but it just tells you some things. So reading a solubility chart. Number one, the curve shows the number of grams of solute in a saturated solution. So any point that falls on this line is, or any line, represents saturated solution. Okay? So if a point falls on the line, it is saturated solution. That's what number one is telling you. Any amount that falls below a line, so if I was looking at this pink line, if something fell below it, it would be unsaturated. If it fell above it, it would be super saturated. If it's on it, it is saturated. Uh, then look at number five. Solutes that tend to move upward, tend to be um, dissolving of solids. So as you increase the temperature and you have, you're trying to dissolve a solid, it's gonna, it's the more you increase, the more it's going to dissolve. So it's going to rise. Now, if you have one that's going down, like this orange one, that is probably a gas. If you have a gas and increase the temperature, it is going to go down, okay? It's not going to, um, your graph is not going to go up. Um, we're not worrying with the solving part. I just wanted you to have these three or these six um, pieces of information here for reading a solubility curve. Now, flip to the second page. Because this isn't on the computer, this was something different. We're going to look at this graph here that I have up here, and I'm going to take you through different examples of questions here. So number one says, which of the salts in the graph is the least soluble at 10 degrees? All right, if I look at my graph, remember, we have grams of solids here, and I have temperature here. So I want to go to 10 degrees, which is right here, and I want to look at this line. Least soluble is the lowest line. What color up here is least, is the bottom at 10? This dark blue, and what you can't see on mine, but you might be able to see better on yours, is that it is KClO3. So what you're going to put in this blank is capital K, capital C, lowercase l, capital O, little three. Did you say over? Uh, little three no, at the top or above? At the bottom. I wrote it above it so I can write it big. You can write it in the so blank. So put that in the blank? Yes, yeah, so that goes in the blank. K, C, so, K? K, capital K, uh -huh. capital C, yeah. lowercase l, capital O, with a little three at the bottom. Uh -huh. Um, that is potassium chlorate, and it is least soluble of all of these at 10 degrees Celsius because it only will dissolve about 6 grams of substance. So if it asks for the most soluble at 10, then I would have to look at whichever graph was the highest up, and it would be... I think that's KI, 
potassium iodide, it's hard to read the, so it's the very top one because it asks for the most. Well, let's look and see what number two is asking. Which of the salts shown in the graph has the greatest increase in solubility as the temperature increases from 30 to 60? All right, so I'm going to go from 30 right here. <laughs> Here's the 30 line. Here's my 60 line. Which line has the greatest slant upward? The N A N O 3. All right, it has a K of uh, no. There's one that slanted a little more. K N O 3. K N O 3. This one right here. It's a K N. So capital K. Capital N, capital O, little three. It's a slope. K N O three. Yeah, all capitals. Its slope is at a greater angle than any of the others What's between those yellow lines. All right, so let me erase these so we don't get confused. Just a All right, number three says, which of the salt has, is the solubility affected least by change in temperature? Which one makes almost a straight line? Which one makes almost a straight line? Oh, um, well, right here at 40, right? Yeah. This one right here, that looks like an I, but it's actually an L. It is big, a uh, capital N, little a, capital C, little L. A sodium chloride, that's our table salt. N, A. N, capital N, little a, mm -hmm. capital C, little L. All right, let's look at number four. At 20 degrees, a super saturated solution of sodium nitrate contains 100 grams of solute and 100 milliliters of water. So if I go to 20 and I go up, following 20 up, I'm going to 100. Here's my point. Notice it's above the sodium nitrate that they were talking about. That means super saturated. All right. How many grams must be added to get it over the line to saturate at 50? So if I go to 50, I follow that up, put a dot here. All right. 50, that's probably. Uh, it's not quite 115. I'm going to say 113. So 113 grams minus this dot right here, which is 100. You get about 13 grams to get it saturated at 50 degrees. Yeah. Uh, number five. Huh? Number 13. 13 grams. At what temperature do saturated solutions of potassium nitrate, that's KNO3, and sodium nitrate, NaNO3, contain the same weight? So where do these two lines intersect? So I'm looking at the All right, so I am going to look at sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate, where they intersect. They intersect right here, and it's asking for temperature, right? Then I'm going to follow that line straight down, and it is 70. 70? Yeah, 70 degrees. 
Yes, because that's where they intersect. Uh, what two salts have the same degree of solubility at 19 degrees? All right, 19 degrees is going to be very close to this 20 line here. So if I go up, I have one here. This one is right here. This one is actually on the 20 line. So it has to be this brown and dark blue one here. So that is the brown. Is number is four 38 grams? 13. 13? Yeah. All right, so it's going to be these two I circled. And so it is going to be K capital. Capital <coughs> N, capital O, three, and K capital, capital C, lowercase L, or six. So I just look at 19, which K ones, C. which no. ones crossed? And when I followed the brown line, it told me KCL. When I followed this darky, darker blue line, it's K and O three. All right, seven. How many grams of potassium chloride? If they have a mistake here, they mean chloride. That should be chloride. Um, KCL will be added to 100 milliliters of water to produce a saturated solution at 50 degrees Celsius. All right, so I want KCL, which is right here. And I want 50, so I'm going to go up until I inter intersect that line, the KCL line, and I'm gonna look across, and it's just above 40, so maybe 42. Here you have to kind of estimate. So 42, oh, not Celsius, 42 grams. That's for solid. So G. So that's how you're reading this graph. So with a paper copy, you can mark on it. And even with the one I have in Cami, you can mark on it, but it's probably a little easier to mark on the paper copy. Um, so let's keep going here. Eight. If a saturated solution of KNO3 is prepared, how many grams of solute will precipitate out if the temperature is suddenly cooled to 30? All right, so it's at 60. So I'm going to go on at 60, so I can know where 60 is. Is that 60? And we want to cool it down to 30. So here's my 30 line, just so I know where I'm looking. And it's KC, uh, no, it's KNO3 right here. So here it is um, 100 and maybe 104 grams. All right, here is hmm, um, oh, I just got in the right spot. And here it's like 48, 48 grams. All right, it's saying the saturated solution is prepared Okay, so it wants to know how much when it cools down here will it um, will come out. So take 104 minus 48, and I get that's six, 56, so approximately 56 grams. All right, so let's look at the next question. Um, 30 grams of KCL are dissolved at 45 degrees Celsius. All right, so if I go to 45, 45 is kind of in between here. I'm going to draw a line up in between 40 and 50. I am looking for 
ACL, which is this brown looking line, and it says 30 grams is dissolved right here. Up here is KCL. At 45, I need 40 grams. So what is 30 take away? Uh, 40 take away 30. 10. You would need 10 grams. This is number nine, right? Uh, number nine. All right, so 30 grams of KCL. What's the temperature? So I'm going to come over 30 grams. And when it in, uh, the intersects KCL, hold on just a minute. Um, you're going to get about 13, so 13 degrees Celsius. Can we finish these last two and then go? I need to catch up. Um, 40 grams, so A, 40 grams of KCL. So I'm going to mark a different color. Well, it might be the best, you know, it's hardest to see. All right, I'm going to say 40 grams of KCL. So I'm going to draw a line across 40 grams. All right, there's KCL. <clears throat> In 80 degrees of water, or 80 degrees of temperature, this is my point right here. Is that on my brown line or below it? Is that 66 grams? Yeah. Number eight. Yeah. This dot right here, is it on that line or below it? Below it. So it is going to be unsaturated. So unsaturated. So what's the answer to number one? 10? 10 grams. All right. So if I do 100. Number nine is 10. Yeah, grams. Number 13, number 10 is 13. What about number 11? Oh, it's All right. 120. So I'm going to go up to 120. And I'm going to mark my line. And we're looking at KNO3, which is right here. And we want 60, so I'm going to bring my line here. All the way up to 120. It is still, it, it, I'm looking at this blue line and here's my point. Is it on the blue line? Here's my point, here's the blue line. Above. It's above. If it's above, then it is super saturated. All right, one more. If I have 80 grams of NaO, so I'm gonna go to 80. And my temperature is 10, so I'll come up 10. And here's where it is the pink line. It's on the line. On the line then means saturated. It assumed that ammonia, which is a gas, is on, was plotted on here. If you read left to right, I would say a gas would slow. Down. Down. All right, so I went through a whole practice with various ones with you. So you have this 10 to do on the back, on the last page. Uh, again, you can do this on the computer. You can do it on the paper. If you do it on the paper, submit a blank one um, so that I can get... Um, it doesn't come up missing for you, and I'll just put a grade in. All right, uh, yes.